Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. This uh, happy little festival that goes on every night until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, as usual, we make a very, uh, every now and then, uh, we make a very special call out to somebody we know in a very special way. Okay, we're just a little late in getting to him, but we got to call our friend here because we always do it like this. Right? Call mobile. There we go. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Come on, start ringing. There we go. There we go. See, we're going to a phone here. You're one minute late. Mr. Bowleton wants to see you at his office. <laughs> oh, you're fired. Yeah, well, you know, that happens. That happens. I uh, know. Usually you're as prompt as Mussolini's trains, but today, oh, one whole minute late, but that's okay. I'm yeah. high on life and wired on gas station coffee. Let's do something. Yeah, so how's everything? In, uh, this is uh, Stephen Pearl, folks. Uh, how's everything in Las Vegas? Very good. I'm considering walking everywhere, but, uh, you know, my little black cat, Buddy Waters, is next to me and all is well. Yeah, because, uh, 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 you know... Um, you're living in, in Lost Wages, Nevada. Lost Wages, Nevada. Where the orange, orange, lemon. For Christ's sake, there goes Junior's College Fund. The only way to come out ahead is to, when you get off the plane, <laughs> walk into the propeller. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Lost Wages, Nevada. Some old cat Where skill. Where the dollar flies away and you don't see it again. Some some cat skill jokes like that, you know, followed by take, know, take, right. take my wife, there please. We, there we go, rating Leonard Barr's material again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm now Henny Youngman. Come on, Henny Youngman, Henny Youngman, like that. All right, my wife wanted to go somewhere she'd never been before for a honeymoon. I took her to the kitchen. Thank you. You know something? He may be. He may have been the worst comedian of all time. Oh, he's horrible. But, I never liked him. I never liked him. But for some reason, he was, he was so horrible that when you see him now, in retrospect, he's hilarious because he's so bad. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I, do you think he knew that? Mm, probably not. But I didn't know him personally. There's the, there's the image, and then there's the real guy. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe the real guy goes, hey, man, <laughs> they really buy that. I'm not onto this shit, man. Maybe... Uh, I'm just going to milk it for everything I can. I'm not even going to play this violin. And everyone knows I'm even better than Jack Benny. Maybe he could play it. Who knows? No, did he play better than Jack Benny? No. I, I don't know. Well, anybody, everybody could play better than Jack Benny. Well, Benny, you know, Benny wasn't terrible. He just wasn't good. Um, no, my, he, he could my, play. He could actually, in real life, he could actually play. He wasn't, uh, you know. My father worked whoever, with him. Uh, my father worked with him once. And my father was a violinist. And he said, I got the feeling that he wasn't as bad as he acted. You know, that uh -huh. in order to play that badly, you have to play fairly good. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. uh, there was a, uh, there was a, uh, uh, what was the name of it? What did they call themselves? Darlene and somebody else and her husband. And it was two very famous people who turned out this album of a woman who was constantly singing off key and a guy who couldn't play the piano. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, I think Soupy Sales used to play that sometimes. Yes. It was some singer and she was like, be just enough off key to really piss you well, off. It, it, it was <laughs> really. You tell she was probably a really good singer. She you know, was. She it was Joe Stafford is who it was. Joe Stafford, yeah, that's it. That's it. I don't remember. But they called, they called somebody and Darlene somebody. I can't remember the uh -huh. last name right now. But she was Joe Stafford, and uh, he was a very famous uh, arranger and orchestra leader who was her husband. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they turned out this album in which, uh, I wish I had it here. I, I would, I'm Darlene, God damn it, my mind is a Let's, fucking. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to YouTube right now and find out my, how about my, that. My, that will solve my, all our my, problems. My my brain has has turned into a juice bar. 
You know, it's really terrible. Uh, <laughs> Can't remember every grandpa. Darlene Let's Edwards. See, Darlene it. Edwards and Jonathan Edwards, I think, was the name. Darlene. Uh, not the same Jonathan Edwards. Did it. How much does it cost? I'll buy it. No. Uh, Darlene Edwards. Joe Stafford, Darlene Edwards. Yes, right. Right. You got it. Stand. Yep. Yep. Gary did a whole bunch of them on YouTube. She even sings Staying Alive on here. So I guess <laughs> she was around for a long time. <laughs> and did it as Darlene Edwards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan and Darlene Edwards. Oh, and here's uh, Jonathan and Darlene Edwards right there. Yeah. And they're there with Jack Benny, and there she is singing Staying Alive, and they're there singing something else. It's magic. Uh, all kinds it's of things. Magic. Train. It's magic is the best one. It is just so. Okay, is Magic the best one? Like, well, I can't play it right now, but it would come out all garbled on this newfangled phone of mine. Yeah, well, also, it would uh, get me uh, 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 a little uh, note that I was pay- playing uh, copywritten music. Oh, yeah, there you go. You get the, from Mr. Steinbaum Burger, which they're lawyers. So, yeah. And the uh, the American music business. And you're hey, don't do that again, or your knees will be bent the other way. No. Yeah, but, if you like your blood on the inside, don't play that song. I love those, I love those a- albums because she was singing so perfectly off key. I mean, you knew yeah. she was a really good musician. And she sometimes would go for a note, you know, and everything was kind of going right. And then she would go for that last <laughs> note, and it was completely off. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, love it. Uh, and uh, she was, it, it was a masterful album. I, I loved it. And Oh, the album wow. cover, the album cover was a guy's hands on a piano and their two left hands. Oh, let me see. I'm looking at the album cover right now. There's her looking at him lovingly and there's two, yeah, there are two left hands. That's very funny. <laughs> very good. good. Good move. <laughs> yeah. Is anything funnier than that? I mean, come on. You know, That's very funny stuff. They were terrific. Uh, other people have tried it, but it not not with the precision that they did it. It was just and uh, Col- Columbia released the album. You know, it wasn't. It was like okay, we'll release because in those days, they, releasing an album wasn't all that expensive. I mean, this was just a piano and a uh-huh. voice, right? Yeah, yeah. Huh? But this wasn't for real. I mean, for real, you had to go to uh, what's her name? Uh, oh God, they made the movie out of it. Florence Foster Jenkins, uh, uh-huh. who uh, they made a movie out of with Meryl Streep, who rented out Carnegie Hall once a year to hold a concert in which she sang opera, and she sung. She was terrible. She was ah. just. <laughs> she was ghastly. Uh, but people, wow, people, like- people loved her because she she gave money to the arts and she was a nice woman. And they would all show up, and they would give her a standing ovation like she was a big star because they loved her. So ah, much. kind of like Mrs. Miller in the mid '60s. And and there's an a, there's a album out on RCA that came out on RCA, and I I think I may still have it in my uh, in my storage uh, of Florence Foster Jenkins. I remember it was one of those 10 inch LPs. You remember 10 inch LPs? I sure. EP, sure. Uh, no, well, yeah, but no, they, yeah, the, 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 kind of the, I, I think they called them EPs. Not but long play, but extended play. Extended EPs, play. Yes. EPs. And, uh, 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 she's on the cover wearing wings, you know, like she's in a Wagner <laughs> opera and her, uh, piano, the, her pianist was Cosmo McMoon. Uh-huh. A Cosmo McMoon, and I don't know if that was a real name. That might have been his porn <laughs> name, you know. It can't be a real name, Cosmo McMoon. But she was, you know, what you love about listening to her and about her story was she so loved music that she wanted to sing in the worst way, and she had the money to rent out <laughs> Carnegie Hall. Because people don't uh-huh. realize this. Hey, I'm playing Carnegie Hall. Great. How much did you pay for it? You know, exactly. Yeah, what you got? <laughs> I pl- I played Carnegie Hall. I was uh, in a uh-huh. in a show for um, Marvel Comics that Stan Lee asked me to be part of, and um, I was on stage reading the part of Doctor Doom. I think it was uh, from ah, Marvel Comics. Sure, old robot face, on, metal face, on Doctor stage Doom. at 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 Carnegie Hall. And just before I went on, I called my mother. I said, "Guess what, Mom?" She said, what? I said, where, guess where I'm backstage. She says, where? I said, I'm about to go on stage at Carnegie Hall. And she was so impressed by that, not realizing that any asshole could buy 
and rent a night yeah. at Carnegie <laughs> Hall. You know. That's funny. It, it was for rent. Uh, and uh, so. If I told my mother I was appearing at Carnegie Hall, she said, what about the other 364 days out of the year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> How, did you like your mother? No. No. Why? No. Why? Let's. I think right wait, now wait, she's wait. in. I think right now she's in hell, sharing a very small room with Hitler. Poor Hitler. What did he do to deserve this? <laughs> <laughs> she was a crazy person and a spirit crusher and a very uh, tantrum throwing. Uh, you know, I'm glad I got away from. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's sit. Lie down on my couch here. Uh, I hated my mother, yet I obsessed over her large bosom. I did not know what to do. <laughs> so every time I see a large bosom, I want to grab it and then smack it. I got like my mother. Yeah. So what was what was? No, what? she was just a, she was a typical crazy Jewish Long Island, you know, crazy person. But, so. <laughs> no, but I mean, what did she do that made you hate her? I mean, like uh, my mother was uh, uh, she was very cloying. She was very um, selfish. I felt. Uh, as a person, because mm-hmm. it was always about what did you do for her? You know, she would always say, I, yeah. so-and-so, such a nice person. Last week, they took me out to blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, it's uh-huh. always about if somebody does something for you, they're a nice person, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so, but my, but my mother wasn't a terrible person, and she didn't, she didn't uh, you know, she was always very proud of my achievements and things like that. So I, I have no reason to hate her. I just didn't like my mother. You know, yeah, I, I loved, I loved, years, and but. I adored. <laughs> I loved, and I adored my father, who went far too early. But uh, uh, how'd you feel about your father? He was all right. You know, we we didn't. Uh, he didn't quite get what I do, but uh, you know, uh, he was all right. <laughs> were, it was uh, from from a distance. They were typical what Queens. Uh, he provided uh, upper middle class Long Island family, Long Island uh, Island family. progressive spirit crusher, and she would. And cry and throw tantrums a lot. When I was a kid, she'd break my toys and stuff, and then she'd apologize and buy me a new toy. Then she'd break that. Then she'd apologize and give me another toy. And blah blah blah. She was not well. Boy, but your father was just—he didn't understand what you did for a living. Is what his? No, nah, he didn't get it. He didn't respect it. He didn't. Oh, he just wanted, what do you do? You go up there and say, "Why did the chicken cross the road?" Blah, blah, blah. I go, well, hey, you know, I uh, guess we won't have much to talk about, really. Jew- so, Jewish, see you later. Jewish parents, and more particularly New York parents, always want for their yeah. kids a good career. All right. Yeah, well, that's, you know, <laughs> not in my case. Uh, I, was, it, I was either going to be a cartoonist or a rock and roll photographer or a comedian. Yeah, well, so the, there and, you and, go. And those are professions. I was from the start. So those are professions they don't understand. If if you said you were going to go to work for Uncle Nate in his box factory, they would be proud. <laughs> of you. Oh, you're going to make boxes, right? Huh? You're such a good boy. It's skilled work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a steady income. You move to Ozone Park, and when you're 30, you'll hang yourself. Man. See, That's what, what happens. I was very fortunate. I grew up in a, uh artistic family. I grew up, my father was a musician. Uh, uh, and yeah. so every time I said, well, I'm going into radio or whatever, they went, great. You know, I mean, they, they uh-huh. my father understood that. He understood I was going into show business just like he was in show business. There you go. Yeah, but, my but, father was an artist, but he didn't get it. But, <laughs> so but, there you go. But very few parents understand that unless no, they yeah. are in art, you know, and then they go. My, yeah. fa- my father said to me once, the nicest thing my father ever said to me was, well, you never played the violin like me, but... Yeah. You went out and started playing the turntables better than I ever played the violin. Ah, there he gave it up to you. Yeah, I mean, he he understood what I did and why I made the choice. I I mean, I tried any number of instruments because I came from the Schwarzman family in San Francisco was the premier music family. Everybody in the, Uh you know, when you met up with somebody as a kid, they would say, oh, and what instrument do you play? You know, that's how uh-huh. well known the Schwarzmans were as musicians. My my grand uh-huh. my my aunt was a harpist and among her the best job she ever had was she worked for Spike Jones. Oh, uh, that's cool. <laughs> and what she did, well, well he, here's how she worked for him. He had a bit in his stage shows where there was a harpist sitting on stage. And she uh-huh. was knitting throughout the whole show. <laughs> right? And then at one point in the show, towards the end, 
she does this big glissando with the harp and then goes back to knitting again. <laughs> hey, it's a gig. What the hell? Yeah, and, and, and she said that after a week at the Golden Gate Theater in San Francisco, uh, <laughs> that knitting she did went all across the stage, what she had knitted. <laughs> because they were doing, you know, in those days they did six shows a day, right? That's right, yeah. So, you know, you, 30, 30 shows, 35 shows, she got a pretty long piece of knitting going across the street. Oh, yeah, that'll make a long uh, sweat yeah. scarf or whatever yeah. she's making. Yeah, but, I mean, Jones play, paid well, and uh, that was a gig, and uh, she had other harp gigs, like with the symphony and so on. And then my uncle Ben, I think his name was, Bem, uh, was, a, uh, was a, a, a cellist, I believe. And then I had an Uncle Arthur, who was a pianist. And, and, uh, and so everybody, everybody in the, my father was a violinist. I try to remember if we had, we had some other relatives who were musicians as well. So it was expected that I would grow up to be a musician. Uh, but no such luck. I tried any number mm. of instruments. First, my father yeah. started me on the violin. I didn't like the violin. Uh -huh. You know why? You have to hold that thing up under your chin for long periods yep. of time, and your hand yep, gets that can be uncomfortable. your hand gets tired, and so you really got to like the violin in order to go through that. So then they what they the next thing they taught me uh, gave me lessons for was the trombone, which <laughs> which really shouldn't be classified as a musical instrument, but just an instrument of mm -hmm. torture. Uh, and, you know what? What, what is it? Uh, um, what's this? Uh, what's the difference between a uh, uh, snake and a trombonist? And the answer is the snake has talent. Uh, you know. Uh, so uh, well, what's, the, what's the difference between a dead raccoon on the road and a dead trombonist on the road? The dead raccoon was probably on his way to a gig. <laughs> and I gotta tell you. <laughs> you tell that to all your musician friends, and they'll chuckle heartily. I guarantee. Yeah. But there were these big, <laughs> gigantic, you know, trombone jokes. But anyway, so I tried the trombone, mm -hmm. and the only thing I liked about the trombone was the spit valve. I liked to play it enough uh -huh. that I got enough spit that when I hit the sp emptied the spit valve, I got a lot of spit on the floor. No. That was it. <laughs> I don't like instruments where you have to spit. I then taught myself uh, the piano and played it mildly, some rock and roll piano, but that was about it, kind uh -huh. of Fats Domino style, because he was my yeah. my idol at the time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I wasn't good enough that, uh, I think maybe at one point I did have a little band with some friends or something, but I was, uh -huh. te I was terrible. But when it came yeah. to radio, that was a different deal altogether, and I loved radio. I just loved what I was doing in radio, and I didn't mind suffering yeah. the consequences and the slings and arrows of trying to get a, a career going. So, did you ever play an instrument? Because you love music. Oh, sure. I played. I played guitar, and I played uh, the keyboards, and I played. Uh, I played the harmonica. I don't know if you have cats the harp or the Mississippi saxophone. Yeah. And I started on the clarinet when I was a kid, and uh, at the very best, I qualified as almost fair on any of them. <laughs> but uh, I needed a capo on the guitar to play an E chord. But I got to tell you, now, <laughs> hearing that, I go, oh, oh, that's a good one. But, uh, yeah, I, I played a few instruments and just, like you said, well, you know, I love music, but it's better if I just listen to it and, <laughs> and uh, critique it, but instead of trying to play it, because I'm not too good at this, and my fingers are bleeding. Now, you wanted to, you said you said you wanted to be a cartoonist. Yeah, it, it, I was for a while, actually. You, I worked for some little low-class uh, unknown magazines in New York oh, really? many years ago, really? in the 70s. Yeah. Yep. Any, any, for Rocket Magazine, which is a rock and roll magazine, I think they lasted about four months. Yeah. And they also had a subsidiary of Porno Magazine, so I did cartoons for them. <laughs> I don't remember the names of them, but you know, if you can find a copy of any of those magazines, they're worth absolutely nothing. Suck My Dick Annual. You know. Yes, yeah, the, the Suck My Dick Christmas issue was my favorite. <laughs> but. Oh, I didn't know Santa Claus was circumcised. Well, he is the way I draw <laughs> Wow. So, so what? what Getting a blowjob from Farrah Fawcett. Whoa! <laughs> it was a simple time. What stunted your 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 uh, cartoon uh, desires? 
Well, publishers are sleazier than club owners. <laughs> At least when you do a comedy club, you get paid immediately when you get paid. Oh, back in but, those uh, and back in those days, all the big comic companies were run by the mob. If I remember, oh, we found that out on um, this magazine because uh, one day a couple of guys in suits came to see the publisher. This guy, well, I won't say his name, but uh, they took him into a room, and I heard smack, boom, boom, smack, and they left. And then a minute later, he came out with a bloody nose. <laughs> it was none of my business. I was just there drawing cartoons. I'm but, not paying any attention, boss. Yeah, cause. yeah. Uh, no, but that's uh, that's uh, yeah, that's terrible. Uh, I. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I uh, well, so tell, well, but, to me. <laughs> I don't know that they were necessarily owned by the mob, but they were controlled by the mob because the mob controlled. Oh, they, were, they had their fingers in it without a doubt. Well, well the, the mob had had control of magazines that got onto newsstands, <clears throat> and in those days, comic books were sold where on the newsstands. <laughs> Exactly. And uh, so I think all of them were mobbed up to some extent. I would have to ask my friend uh -huh. Shecky, who's the big expert on, on comics. Uh, but, uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, they had to deal with that. It's, and, uh, you know, so, so uh, I, but you never, so you, you quit the, the, quit the comic career? How long did that last? Well, I, I did it for uh, maybe a year or two years. And, uh, you know, you, you, I draw something and I give it to, well, you get paid when the thing's published and two months later you get a check for like $100. I go, well, this isn't, I don't like this very much. So, <laughs> and uh, I also sent stuff to the National Lampoon and to the bigger magazines, but nobody wanted it. So oh, yeah, that, I stuck I'll with tell you, you're absolutely lower right. class stuff. You're absolutely right. They do pay on publication because I was I did stuff for... Yeah, I, I hated did, that. At I least did, I go to a comedy club. Oh, you, got, you, you get your $5 as soon as you're done. Hey, thanks, man. You get free french fries. Oh, boy. Oh, that guy's played if he doesn't mind. Okay, I'll do it. Well, I, I did a column for Hustler, and I would turn it uh, in, and I was getting a dollar a word is what I was getting paid. Uh, so I, tw I usually uh, use about 1,200 words, so I got $1,200. But it, I didn't get paid till that public that particular issue came out, exactly, and then I got yeah, paid. And then, then they eventually June, lowered yeah. it to a flat rate of nine hundred and fifty dollars a column, and then they uh, uh, lowered that to me not being there anymore. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. well, because it's, Hustler, yeah, it's, it's a, Hustler was in a lot of trouble, you. you know. Yeah, unless you're like really well known or something. I get well known cartoonists or writers, and it's kind of hard to. It's not fun eking out a living that I found that it wasn't that much fun trying to <laughs> do that. So, and the cartoons would take a while too. So, okay, all that for like a hundred dollars. I don't see that for three months. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Where do I sign up? So that's, you know, that's no fun. Uh, that's no fun. But, uh, so, uh, that w after, after comic books, then what did you do? I just started doing stand up, and I got to a couple of jobs here and a couple of jobs there. And then, uh, I moved to San Francisco in 79, and uh, within a year and a half, I was making a meager living at stand-up, and I've been starving ever since. The, well, you you did okay in the in the heyday of San Francisco. I did all right, yeah. You know, I paid the rent, paid the bills, bought some toys, what the hell. Well, in those days, you could actually make a decent living in San Francisco as a comic, you know. Oh, sure, and rent was very reasonable back then. That was a secret, so, you know, anybody could... You can walk down the street in San Francisco. Oh, the for rent sign. Hey, you want to be your apartment? How much you got? I got the money right now. Okay, you're moving that day. So well, that's why that's you're, gone forever. That's why you're living in Vegas now, right? That's exactly why we moved. But I'm enjoying it here, and I've been on stage more times and done more things in like a couple of weeks or in a month than I do in a year in San Francisco. So it's fun. Yeah. I opened for Carla Bow last weekend. That was a lot of fun. He's doing a midnight show at the Tropicana Friday and Saturday night. Oh, and. Uh, See. And there's a club called Jokesters that let me go on there, and they said they'd uh, start throwing me some green soon, so that'd be nice. It's some guest sets, so I don't know what I could do. So, you know, there's clubs here, and I'm little by little going on stage here, so, yeah. Yeah, that's So true. I like it. So you, I like you're it. Doing... Once I get my car all fixed up, then I'll be driving instead of walking. You're actually doing better in Vegas than you were doing in San Francisco towards the end. Exactly. How many, you know, there's so many... If you're, you know, if you're a local and an old local like me, there's only so many paid gigs in San Francisco. The Throckmorton Theater is great. They use us. And uh, the Punchline would use us twice a year. That's about it. So, you know, I'm yeah. glad I came out here. Yeah. Because I, I uh, it, uh, you know, I, um, uh, uh, whenever I would talk to you recently, I'd say, what are you doing? And you say, I think I have a gig next month, you know. Yeah, you really maybe. Were, you really, <laughs> maybe. You, you really weren't working, so it's unusual that you moved to Vegas, which I believe is a 
must be a pretty competitive town for this sort of thing. And you're working a lot, you know. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm not looking to be Brad Garrett or Wayne Newton or anything, but I just want to go on stage here and there and I'm doing it. So, yeah. You know, you know something, and it might lead somewhere, it might yeah. not, but I'm having fun and I like it here and the rents are cheap. So, yeah. what the hell? Yeah, but you, it doesn't snow. you should do it as best you can so that you can look at yourself and say, uh, you know, maybe I still have a career, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what is this career you speak of, Earthling? <laughs> he said the C word, the C word. Yeah, I know you got a good friend in Carl Above who probably will use you a lot more, you know. And you I play, hope so. And playing the Tropicana is no small deal. It's a big hotel. Nope. Yeah, no, they got a great, the, the, the room there is really cool. They're there to laugh and have a good time. Was that, it's a good was that the hotel? It reminds me of the early comedy store, so yeah. they had a good vibe there. Hey, we've run out of time. Just oh, to- man, that came and went quick. Nothing like talking about failed careers in order to uh, make uh, the time <laughs> go like by. The time zip on by when you talk about failed careers. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's do it again uh, in a couple of weeks or something like that. Right, Steve? Anytime, my friend. Put the date and uh, I'll be here. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Yeah, yeah, that's our old friend, Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. We really appreciate it and all of that. Okay, anyway. Boy, I've got to get... Look, look at this. See these? Those are those little uh, ear plugs that I use. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me go back here. Maybe see if I can find some more uh, to put in. Uh, uh, here they are. Here they are. Here, I've got four of them here, so I can use two of them now, and I better mail away for more. These are uh, these are Etymotix earphones that I use, and they have a very, they, they only work if you have a tight fit. Now, they have things that go right into your eardrums, but I don't like those, uh, because I don't like things that go directly into my eardrum. Hold on a second here. Um, but they also have these things that have um, foamy, you know, foamy cushiony things. Okay, uh, and so what you do is you take them and you scrunch them like this. Okay, and then you put them in your ear, and as they're in your ear, they then kind of spread out and uh, uh, fill up your ear cavity. So there's no outside sound coming in, and these were getting a little, a little hinky. Okay, all right. Oh, that's really nice. Now all I can hear is myself and you. If you call the uh, citizens panel, let me just bring up Skype here. Uh, let me turn it on, online. And we're ready to go. So Skype is online, and then you will find out what the citizen panel is all about. Citizen panel is uh, unique to this program, folks. Uh, we only have, uh, what, what, what's the amount? Uh, we only have a, a, a whole uh, uh, a group of people in, uh, can I try this again? I'm all flabungent tonight. Uh, we have a system whereby uh, a whole bunch of people talk at the same time. That doesn't sound like it would be interesting, but sometimes it gets quite invigorating. And sometimes it doesn't. Uh, 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 let me see here. Ah, well, you know, already we got one person calling to be on the citizen panel. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous, from, from Plano, Texas, uh, it's Scott Boddicker. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Yeah, our friend Jack Bishop gives you guys all names or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, he's got, you know, the night nurse, and uh, this person has a name, and that person has a name. You don't have any name at all, right? I think so. Okay, all right. Doesn't matter. Uh, you know what I wish he'd stop doing next time you talk to him, tell him this, uh, is using uh, the word Hawaii. <laughs> it's not Hawaii. <laughs> it's Hawaii. Uh, and, and Hawaii sounds like an old Jew thinking of going on vacation. Where are you going? I'm going to Hawaii. I'm going to Hawaii. Hello. To see the you don't have a, a, a photo meeting tonight? What happened? 
Uh, it's next week, uh, the 17th. Oh, oh, I thought it was every week on Wednesday. No, it's no, every it's, other week. Yeah, Isn't every it? other. Oh, so you've been, you've been giving that as an excuse for just not having to call in. I see. Okay. Uh, no, I don't. I don't need excuses. I uh, I have other things. There's uh, this uh, Thursday. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to a concert at the UC Theater called "Get the Lead Out," and I guess these guys are Led Zeppelin uh, a tribute band. Well, uh, I'd pass on something like that. It might, it might be, be interesting. Led Zeppelin fan. Nah. Uh, you know. I, I'll go for a little while. And, Did you know, I ever tell you that's the time Led Zeppelin beat me up? No, no but uh, I probably deserved it. Huh? <laughs> tell us uh, about your Led Zeppelin uh, experience. Well, I was, uh, I, was, uh, I, went, I was invited to go to the Led Zeppelin concert out in Long Island at the Nassau Coliseum. Yeah. And I go there, and they, uh, they, uh, they load me up with all these patches, you know, like badges about, you know, backstage, Great. side of the stage, front of the stage, all of that. Access. Right? Yeah. All backstage access. access. All, all access. Full access. Right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, so now I decide I want to go from this point A to point B, which is going through the back of the stage, right? Right. And uh, some guy, one of these, uh, one of the goons they hire, um, uh, who I later found out was uh, their head of security and was um, eventually deported from the United States for some of his beating up of people. I, I, I'm going from one side to the other and they go, well, where are you going? Hey, you can't go here. And I show them the badge, right? And I start walking through. And next thing you know, they jump me and start beating the shit out of me. Wow. Yeah. And wow. I got up and I just ran like hell. I ran outside of the Nassau Coliseum. I didn't want to even stay there. Right? Uh, it became a big deal in the press. Okay? Ooh. It became a big deal in the newspaper that I had been beaten up by Led Zeppelin goons uh, and all I was trying to do was just go from one place to another, and they, they, they thought that that was enough to just jump on me and beat the shit out of me. You said you had a whole bunch of uh, passes. Yeah. Was one of them on your back that said, said kick, kick me? me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, I, uh, uh, it became a big deal, uh, and I've never told this story, actually. Uh, but uh, somebody I know was uh, working as a uh, limo driver for them. And so yeah. we had to take them around to various venues and so on. And at one of them, they were in a back room somewhere. And he was back there because he was the limo driver. And they're discussing if they should have me killed. <laughs> Why? Because of, of all the bad publicity I gave them. Oh, wow. These guys were nuts. They were absolutely nuts. Uh, and when they came to San Francisco, they beat up Bill Graham. Well, I'll certainly make sure I don't tell any of these guys that I know you. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, these aren't. This isn't Led Zeppelin. Well, yeah, but they, they want to be Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but, but you asked me why I didn't like Led Zeppelin, and I think I have a pretty good reason. Yeah. 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 They wanted to kill me. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people wanted to do that. Now, how did the press? How did the press find out about it? Well, did while while they were in New York, okay, yeah. uh, their uh, their a manager who was also Peter Grant, who was also a fucking crook. Um, they took all the money back, the proceeds from the uh, event, because usually Eight. usually you get paid in cash, and then you have people take it in a Brinks truck and you put it in the bank the next morning, right? Uh, they took the money back to the hotel, and the hotel got robbed, and the money and the money was gone. But story has it that one of the major investigations they were doing was against Peter Grant and his. That's people. the guy's name in Hammer of the Gods, Peter Grant. Was he a big fat guy? Like yes, he was a big fat guy. Yeah, okay. uh, he. Uh, he was actually the police. This was known. You can go back to the newspaper accounts of the day. One of the suspects in the robbery was Peter Grant saying that this was a way they were trying to keep all the money for themselves rather than having to pay taxes on it. I believe that. Yeah. 
I read that book in uh, Hammer of the Gods. Yeah. They sound psychotic. They I were. Mean, they were. You know, I think even if you Jimmy get... Jimmy Page was like robbed. a big Mr. Crowley fan. He bought his house. If you have, if you get robbed, you still got to pay the tax. No, he probably he's right. Yeah. They probably took the money in the suitcase. Oh no, you can claim that as a loss. You oh can, really? I think yeah. you can claim well, that. I guess it offsets it. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, uh, and then the um, the the head of his head of a security who was a, a British guy, I can't remember his name now. The one that beat me up, beat up Bill Graham, and Bill Graham went to the authorities, and they they literally deported the guy. Good. He, he should have come back into the country. David, the guy that runs the venue, used to be the president of Bill Graham Presents. Really? Yeah. So, he the film, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, I'm just wondering, you know, uh, he, mu- ask he may about, not like ask him, uh, ask, him, uh, ask him about the time that he that he got, uh, that uh, Bill Graham got beaten up by the goons from Led Zeppelin. It's a okay, famous I will. Sto- It's a famous story. I like yeah. I'm sure I'll see him, but uh, he had also mentioned uh, that he was going to Bobby Slayton on Saturday. Uh, well, no, no, Sa- was it Thursday or Saturday? Bobby's playing at the Punchline. No, oh, is he playing at the Punchline? He, I didn't think he was going to do many gigs lately. He kind of yeah has opted out of doing comedy a lot. Yeah, you know. But, but uh, um, no, nah, it's uh, yeah Thursdays um, uh, get the let out. Oh, <laughs> so. yeah. Well, I'm uh, not photographing. I, you know, I don't want to photograph a. No, a but tribute. but you'll go to anything you can get him for free, right? That's right. That's really that's right. really what it's <laughs> that's, all about. That's, that's pretty much the story. You know, he sends me an invite. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, when I read on Zeppelin, Jimmy Page was so obsessed with Aleister Crowley, he bought his house like a psycho. Yeah. No, he they were. He was in in Aleister Crowley. And I can't remember which one of Led Zeppelin they found in a closet at a hotel once, tied upside down, naked. Oh uh, he had been in some kind of sexual deal, and that's it's what he kind of dug. Oh my yeah, God. I, I, I won't. I, I can't say which one it was. Let him might have been because he was like, totally. Let nuts. him sue me. I don't give a fuck. I have nothing to lose. Well, who's here. alive, Alex? Is Jimmy Page and? They'll sue me hey, and put Blaine. Gabnet out of business. Isaac Do me a favor. Yeah. Uh, no, they they they, they were, get over that. I'd go oh, crazy when you say yeah. that story. It's like because oh, they sounded like they were psychotic. Peter, Peter Grant. Peter Grant was crazy. You know. He Alex, he had to be that like just holy stone cold crazy. Some of those guys, some of those uh, managers back in the day were really questionable. So it wasn't an act, Alex. You actually like this guy's really nuts. Yeah. Oh wow! Uh, I mean, Alan Klein, for instance, who was the became the Beatles manager. He'd been the Rolling Stones manager, and they got rid of him. And when the uh, uh, when the Beatles left, uh, when the when uh, what's his name died. Um, oh, the the guy who was with John Lennon all the time. But what's his name again? Uh, he was friends with him. Uh, the oh, Jewish guy. Yeah, the Jewish guy. Uh, when he died, they, they were in desperate need of a manager. This, and this is one of the reasons why McCartney kind of broke off from the rest of them, because he wanted uh, the Eastman family to manage them, and they wanted Alan Klein. Now, Alan Klein had been the Rolling Stones manager. But R- Alan Klein, now i got to tell you, I mean, I, I've had, de- I had dealings with Alan Klein. They were always very positive and nice, and I, he had a guy by the name of uh, Bennett. Uh, what was the guy's first name? Uh, and he and they they were they were nice enough to me, but the word around town was is that Alan Klein was a cold stone crook, mm-hmm. and at he would do things like a new Beatles album would come out, and he had a deal with the the record company they give him two hundred fifty thousand copies off the top, which he would then sell himself to make some extra money. Oh my God, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Did the Beatles know about this? I mean, that's kind of cold. Well, I one time it was either George Harrison or John Lennon that I asked the question. I said, you know, Alan Klein's been managing you, but this guy's been stealing money from you. That's I think cool. it was Harrison. And Harrison said to me, or Lennon, I can't remember which, well, he can steal $200,000 from us if he wants to, or even a million. He's made me $10 million. 
<laughs> oh <my laughs> you know? So if he wants to steal <laughs> good, if it keeps him happy, it keeps him happy. <laughs> you know? I can tell you records. <laughs> so uh, cost uh, of business. Huh? Th that's how Alan Klein got away with it, you know. But there was a big, there was a whole thing where Le McCartney had wanted nothing to do with Alan Klein, and so he had the Eastmans kind of manage his career, and so that's what kind of was breaking up the Beatles was that that whole thing, you know. Wasn't Yoko. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Did you go to the Rolling Stones concert in San Francisco in like 1980? I mean, Brady the one at uh, the one at uh, uh, what do you call it? Candlestick. Candlestick. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah, uh, I didn't go, but you gave me uh, your the, the pass talking about passes. Uh, there was um, like a, a fabric stick on pass for that mm -hmm. i don't know what i've done with it it's it's gone but i, I put it on a book uh, because uh anyway you gave me that i thought it was i think very it was cool. like the tongue or something wasn't it uh no it was um it was a rectangle and uh a, a, about that big and yeah. it and it's and it stuck on your clothes you know it had adhesive yeah uh, on it and uh, I, I remember I did that from a broadcasting booth in, in Candlestick. We were doing a, a, a broadcast from the live show, but we weren't <laughs> broadcasting the music. We were just yeah. doing a show from the live show. So, uh, yeah. And, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I liked that pass. It was very cool. Yeah. I don't remember what, exactly what was on it, but I knew it was Rolling Stones. Yeah. I don't know. Why'd I give it away? I have no idea. Uh, because uh, you'd already torn the back off of it, <laughs> it was, and, and all I got was scraps. Hey, you want this? <laughs> so, oh, it was like I had stuck it to my. I guess I had to stick it to my clothes to in order. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it yeah. was cool. Yeah, yeah. That was I was at that one. Uh, I saw them in Madison Square Garden two years earlier, when yeah. they did what was maybe one of the first big concerts. You know how concerts went. When I first uh, um, did the Beatles show in Houston and the Rolling Stones, uh, they would come out with five amps and a drum set, you oh, know, yeah, and that was no it. More. You know, that was it. And they got the, the wall of sound yeah. by, uh, who, who's the guy that got arrested? Uh, well, that's uh, Phil Spector, but that's a, that's, a, that's a method of recording, not. Uh, not to oh no no no! Didn't he have no, uh, like no. Altec voices and no, the speakers no, no. stacked up twenty high no, and twenty no, wide? No no that was a studio um, um, technique that he invented called the wall of sound. And well, we, how, all these other guys that had all of those Marshall amps that would be that you know, was that was called a lot of amps. That's what they oh, called that them, was it. You know. <laughs> uh, but what happened was it was the first. Uh, Brian Epstein is the name, by the way. Oh, yeah, that, yes. I know it was Jewish guy. Tyson's Acosta says that, and also October 1981 was the uh, Rolling Stones. At uh, okay, so that's when you you gave me that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, what was it? What was he saying? Uh, where were we? Was, oh. Uh, uh, Oh, oh, oh! You were you were talking about the wall of sound. That, that was that yeah. was a that was a studio technique. Uh, but what happened with the Rolling Stones? The show they did was the first time I ever saw a big, huge production mm -hmm. in in music, and then everybody started doing that. You know, they had like a lotus leaf pedal cage, a stage that started as a as a pedal and then went down like this. You know, wow. and uh, and became. Uh, uh, you know, the whole stage. And then, of yeah. course, you know, they did all their various stuff. Uh, that was the first time I ever saw that kind of production. Prior to that, it was just they came out and, you know, there were some amps on stage and they sang a whole bunch of songs and they left. Right. <laughs> you know? And the next group used the same amps. <laughs> well, now now concerts, they you know, it's like a circus goes to, comes to town and they set up and they get ready to do their big show and they do it. You know, it's like a big production number. Yeah. You know, and, and they charge you. What, Marjorie went to see Eric Clapton this week. Oh, she's so Clapton. Yeah. And she wanted me to go. And I, you know, I, I uh, he hasn't been good uh, in years. And I think he needs to throw another kid out of the window. Ooh. But, uh, <laughs> 
Out. Because he needs introduce him to the Led Zeppelin. Uh, goons. He needs an inspiration for his music. Anyway, uh, she wanted me to go, and I'm not a big fan of Eric Clapton. I mean, he's okay, you know. Uh, it was all right when he played for me personally in my studio, but you know, uh, since then, what the hell? <laughs> we uh, were painting it. I, 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 I've never been that crazy. I mean, I know he's good. Okay, I know he's a good guitarist. I've seen him play the guitar right, right in front of me on an acoustic, and just. I sat there with my jaw dropping, okay? He's a very good guitarist. But I just have never been a big fan, so I, you know, I don't want to, I don't like going to concerts anyway because they're long and most of them are boring, all right? But she loves Eric Clapton, and she wanted me to go, and I, I really didn't want to go, so she took her girlfriend with her, cool. uh, you know? And what I are did, tickets like in New York for well, uh, that let, kind That's of what I was about to tell you. A yeah. hundred and fifty dollars a ticket. Wow. Really? Wow. Yeah. For what? An old. Well, you know, I, yeah. I think when I saw the Eagles at the uh, and believe uh, me, Oracle. he he doesn't do a big show. He just sits out there and plays the guitar. You know. Yeah. yeah. One hundred fifty. Saw the Eagles. I think they were about one hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, but that, that was a great concert. Those guys are great. Well, they were. Yeah, yeah they still... didn't. I did. They didn't float my boat either. You know, I find, I find a lot of those those kind of folk rock bands, and that's what they yeah, really you're right. Were. They were like country type. I always thought. Uh, you know, to be kind of boring. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I was well, with it myself. You know, I know the music. Now, and, I would go and uh, see Elvis Costello, for instance. Oh, I like Elvis Costello. Costello, I saw He's one original. concert. He, I saw the Romeo and uh, what was the thing he did? Uh, or Juliet uh, yeah, uh, Letters guess. concert, where he did it with a string quartet. Wow, that's nice. And it was they and they did it at uh, San Francisco. Uh, was it the maybe not the Opera House? Maybe the Symphony Hall? Maybe the Opera House? And Alex, I like when he even took over the talk show. I thought he was really good, Elvis, when he did the talk show. You mean when he did Letterman? Yeah, Letterman. Yeah, I thought he was really good. Yeah, the talk I actually show. like him because he's music. The, how he dare good? you call Letterman the talk show? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's true. I liked it. Yeah. But I do. I, I like Elvis though. I thought he was really good. I think Elvis Costello is brilliant, and I think his wife is yeah. even more brilliant. I think she's just incredible. He, I like them. Uh, I'm sure probably his book. He's got a book out. Yeah. But uh, anyway, like, yeah. you, know, uh, like uh, you know, good, good, good band. Is anybody else going to call tonight, or is it just going to be us? You know, because if I start talking yeah. politics with Phil. Uh, Tony isn't going to say a word, and Scott, oh, I'll and Scott is, and, and Scott, Scott, Scott's going to go crazy. Scott, Scott is going to shrug. Yeah. <laughs> you know. My father thought Rock Hudson was alive still the other night, but that's another story. Who? My father is forgetting a lot. I mean, talking about my friend because it's on my mind. He, he, I can give him his pills in the morning, and then he'll remember for like a half hour, and then. Did you give him my medicine? So he's, I think it's a little bit of old time. Well, you should come, over, him, you should come over and see me. You should come over and see me. I'm the same way. You no, know, you know what's going on. Like Alex, I come home for lunch to give them lunch. And I just come home for lunch. He remembers some things and then sometimes he'll forget. How old is he? 83. He's too, he's not old enough to be that bad off. That's the doc He's not that bad. Some days... He's fine. No, but it's like I'm little saying little short-term things. He gets a little confused sometimes. Maybe he but wants to be. Maybe you know, he maybe he wants to forget you, Tony. <laughs> he does. I know. That's his dad. Forget me. Just, you were an accident. Who are you <laughs> again? <laughs> you know. I think he's telling the truth there. My mother's mine. He's telling the truth. Shut up, Leo. That's what she knows. By the way, I, I'm really really proud of myself. Uh, I uh, this is true. Uh, and more people, will you please call. Uh, uh, I uh, I did something today. You know, we have an iMac here that's uh, maybe 10 years old. And uh, I finally put in the Mini Mac to replace it for Marjorie. And when I tried to uh, reinstall the operating system, the computer said, your hard drive is failing. We won't do it. Oh, no. Get so, another hard drive? Well, you, you can't in in the iMac. The hard drive is inside. Yeah. And oh, you can't, iMac, not Mac Pro. No, okay. No, you, nice. and you, and just like the Mac Pro, you can't just get into it. Okay, right. it's just no. not that easy. All right. 
So, uh, I, uh, uh, what? Did you reformat the hard drive? Well, no, I tried. It wouldn't do it. It just said, did this hard drive is toast. toast. It, it, it's not toast. It's still working, but it's, it's failing. It, yeah. Yeah. It just recognized that it wasn't, it was on the edge of just going bad. Can you use an external hard drive? Well, no, that's, that's what I did. And I yeah. completely resuscitated this iMac. So, folks, if you have an iMac and it has a hard drive going and it's old and you don't want to spend the money to put in the hard drive, just get yourself an external. And I went over to Costco and they had, uh, for $119, they had, they're now five terabyte oh my God, mini nice. drives, those little mini drives. Yeah. You know, yeah. five, five terabytes. terabytes, five terabytes. So I, uh, I, I partitioned it. Okay. Uh, because it, it, and I installed a new operating system in it. Right. This thing runs like it's brand new. Yeah. Yeah. I did, I did that to my, uh, iMac too. Uh, it was, it was, it wouldn't read, it wouldn't do something. It wouldn't boot. Right. And you have to do like a control T or something. It's control. To it's it's command P, command P. What? Command P, and that Command and P. that brings up the uh, there's a recovery mode, oh, okay. and you get that menu, and one of them is do you want to install uh, the uh, uh, the what do you call it? the uh, ring system uh, the the, uh, the system uh, the new the latest system or the latest system that's available to your machine, which in my case was High Sierra. And you go, yes, and then it says, uh, which of the hard drives do you want to use? And since you can't use the other one because it won't re recognize it, but it does recognize that, you tell it to go to that. And then from then on in, it boots from that hard drive. Right. And the right. only thing you have to do is make sure it's plugged into your USB port when you want to boot it up, and you've got yourself a brand-new computer. Yeah, I huh? Does your iMac have a firewire too? You could do that, and you'd be even quicker, I would think. But. It has a firewire, but I don't. You're going to be pretty hard put to get firewire drives today. Oh yeah, I, that's have, true. I, yeah. I still have some have because lightning. of my uh, uh, what do you call it? My MacBook Pro uh, is FireWire 800, and I've got a couple of Lacy FireWire drives. Yeah, but I but big. but they don't make them anymore. They just don't, yeah. you know. They yeah. uh, uh, Because what came out, and these, of course, my iMac isn't this way. They came out with the USB 3.0. And right. USB 3.0 is about as fast as most internal hard drives would be. But sure. in this case, it's not as fast. But it, fast it, as Thunderbolt? I, but, 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 uh, Where are you going, man? You don't need it that quick. Well, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. No, you know, it, you've it, got some big graphics but, programs. And, well, he's just doing it for... I, I, I'm I just I was just trying to get this machine working again. I wanted to resuscitate it, and uh, that's a way people can do it. If you if you are listening to me and you have an old iMac and the thing is on its last legs because the hard drive is going, there's mine there's right there. Yours, right? Does that ha and is that the one that you put the external drive on? Well, well, I did have an external drive on it, and everything worked, and I was running Tiger on it just fine. But then all of a sudden, I got to thinking, well. Since it's toast, I just went in and reformatted the whole thing and reinstalled it, and it works fine. Yeah. Okay. That'll that sometimes will save it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But eventually, that drive's going to go, and when it goes, uh, it, just you know, put an external on there, put in a USB port, and uh, boot from the external. Yeah, it's like eleven years old. I mean, it's time for it to go. Oh, Come mine. On. Mine was two thousand seven. Maybe it's eleven. It's probably the same year yours is. Yeah. You know. I don't know when I actually got it. I can check on the. But I, you know, it's very hard. You don't want to throw out a computer if you don't have to. You know. Yeah, I like to see it. By the way, I, I, need to I switched all the computers those. at the store and and the server, and uh, then all the old computers were sitting in, in in a storage room, and then I switched out those computers. And the server, and I ended up with even more workstations and more servers sitting in a storage room. So I, uh, I had to get rid of a, a, a printer and an old copy machine and and about ten workstations and two servers. I ha I put them in the I had them put in the back of the car, and I bring them to an electronics recycler. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
They took them. I took the hard drives out of them, but yeah, uh, stop them in. They take your personal information. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they can do with so any of you other motherfuckers out there going to call? Huh? What's that? I, I'm getting people to call. I'm, I'm oh. doing my pitch for people to call. My begging and pleading and getting down on bended knee and saying, you know, fuck all of y'all. I'm quitting the business if you don't call tonight. Any word in the hurricane? Are they going to get hit? What do you mean? Are, they got hit. Where, where were you? I didn't. Well, my mother said it was coming. It's a Category 4, she said. Well, they came and went, I think. It, it's now down I to just, a Category 3, and it's blow, It's like blowing your nose. What? Oh, I must have missed it. Yeah, you mean, must I mean, have halfway through it. Georgia already, I think. Okay. At least everybody, nobody got hurt. That's good. What she friend of mine has a carpet store in Panama Beach, and uh, he had he sustained a lot of damage. And, uh, you know, so I'm just hearing about it on Facebook. Yeah, so big deal. It's Florida. Fuck them. You're right, Alex. Who would want to move to Florida? It's so dangerous. Uh, you know, I, I, every time I hear a Florida hit, uh, a hurricane hit Florida, I sit here laughing my fucking head off. I mean, why do people, I know they retire there, but you're right. It's dangerous. Your house will be ripped apart any moment. It seems like they're always getting like yeah, comes if you live in California, if you live in California, an earthquake can hit. And if you live in the Midwest, there are tornadoes. And if you live in New York, you can get mugged. There's bugs. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> That's what I was big thinking. bugs, yeah. you know, but and, uh, and, I was afraid. But, but the, you know what else they have in New York? What? Copperheads, those poisonous snakes. Yeah. Really? I don't like snakes. And uh, I, I grew up in uh, about an hour north of New York City. And they were. I'd walk home from the bus, from mm -hmm. the school bus, and they'd be copperheads sunning themselves in the middle of the street, curled up. You in know. Brooklyn? Well, in the country, it sounds Not like. Not in Brooklyn, Westchester. Oh, Westchester. They would have shot it in Brooklyn, Phil. <laughs> well, people yeah. live in Westchester. I hope they get bitten. But anyway, <laughs> you know, the only place I care about saving is Plano, Texas. What? Yeah, that's what he does. <laughs> no snakes in Plano? Uh, we have a okay. Uh, water now, now you, you know the, no big, the biggest danger. Really? The biggest danger whenever there's a hurricane yeah. is that a very dangerous breed of animal comes out. I People, don't know. weather forecasters <laughs> who are <laughs> standing <laughs> in the fucking rain. They had a guy at NBC today who was being blown so badly by the wind he had to hold on to a pole. And I'm going, what kind of moron are you? Haven't you heard what the governor of Florida said? Get the fuck out! Did you did you ever look at that parody I sent you of uh, these guys off camera uh, that they, they pan over to and the guy is doing the news? Oh, and no, that's on. real. That's not a parody. No, not, not, not the one with the guys walking behind him. But some guys. There's a guy. Throwing, there is a guy. There's a reporter, weather guy, going. It's yeah. very sorry. And he's he's acting like he's, you know, fighting the wind and so on. Right. And right in back of him, some guys are just walking by. Right. Well, I sent you that one, <laughs> but I also sent you one where this guy was pretending to be a reporter, and there was people off to the side throwing lawn chairs behind him, and another guy with a garden hose. Yeah. <laughs> and he was spraying him. I, I sent you that uh, one. Uh, well, I you mean, that was it? probably put on. That particular yeah, it was a put on. Yeah. It, it was a parody. But I mean, what kind of moron stand out there in the middle of the of the of the of the, uh, of, of the hurricane? I mean, especially when the governor of New of Florida, Rick Scott, Florida. says, "Get the hell out!" You know, when every public official is going to get the hell out, and these guys from these TV networks are sitting out there, you know, getting blown, so to speak. <laughs> You know, it's just, yeah. it was just, it's just ridiculous, you know. Well, they have a word for the guys that don't leave. It's called sheltered, shelter in place. And, uh, you know, they, I, they're nuts. Well, I mean, it's, you it's the storm surge that's the problem. You could probably stay there if you got a strong basement, you know. No basements in Florida. No basements in Florida. Oh, well, then you got your fucked. Yeah, I think the water table is about five feet down. Yeah. And that's why they don't even bury people in the ground. They have to have mausoleums above ground, just like uh, uh, the, New Orleans. Yeah, well, that's the reason for it in New Orleans. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Florida, it's the same thing. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, 
So what else is there to talk about? We talked about the weather. Yeah. Uh, anything with Trump? Oh, you'd have to do that, wouldn't you? I don't. Tony? <laughs> I, I Tony, think he's so entertaining. Tony, Tony, don't you know that in Phil's presence you don't want to bring up? You know, saying Trump's name in Phil's presence is like saying... Uh, Beetlejuice. Uh, no, saying Alexa <laughs> when a house in a house full of, of echoes, okay? Yeah. You know? I mean, I was listening to Damien tonight, and he was talking about his, his echo, and mm -hmm. he referred to it. He said, I can't say its name because it'll start... Uh, here's a headline. Bezos loses $9.1 I guess the stock market went down seven or 800 points oh, yeah, in your the tech stock. Your boy can really brag about the stock yeah. market today. Yeah. It's still pretty good. 801 points. Yeah, and, and the Fed says, uh, Trump says the Fed has gone crazy. Mortgages are an eight-year high. So, you know, I guess there's a reason to celebrate. A uh -huh. Reason to celebrate? What yeah, is, what? well, that's that's what the uh, the Dems like, you know, no. more taxes, raise the interest rates, you know. Just, no, uh, no, nothing no. with the judge. He's been quiet. I guess they swore. Yeah, him. I guess he's listening to some cases. You think he's dead? Oh, he's going to be on a case? Oh, God. Yeah, it's yeah. like some parking ticket stuff. Can you guys oh, yeah. talk with him now? What? But anyway, uh, uh, no, but it, it, today, where was it? Uh, let me see here. The stock market finished eight hundred and thirty-one dollars down. The Dow, yeah. the Nasdaq, three hundred and fifteen, which is extraordinarily high for the Nasdaq. Uh, my own ex-company that I have stock in, uh, uh, Sirius, down twenty-three cents, which for them, at twenty-three is cents. Is about half of their value. Right now. No, what it is, it's uh, let's see here, three point seven percent of their of their value. Okay, so anyway, uh, uh, let me see here. The uh, uh, where I don't have the uh, the the uh, Standard and Poor's, but supposedly, I was told by Shecky, who is a finance guy, that uh, really one of the things you have to consider. Uh, it always uh, is the standard and poor. That's a better indicator of how good or bad things are. Yeah. Now, I wasn't much. I didn't invest anything. My ex was the investor, and she got everything when we divorced. Yeah. But um, the uh, people tell me that the S and P was the way. If you invested in an S and P fund, that it did very, very well over the last fifteen years. Yeah. But that, that's supposedly the one to watch as an indicator. Uh, the Dow Jones is, uh, it's like, it's just, you know. It, supposedly a lot of this today was due to tech stocks, which yes. just took a dump all over the place. Yeah, well, you know. And now Bezos lost $9.1 I'm just wondering if he's still the richest man in, uh, is it the world or America? Uh, it was the richest man in the world, I think. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, More than you know, the salt in the Brunei. And... Well, all, all of this is on paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't really uh, matter much. Uh, yeah, all of my wealth is on paper. It's called Charmin. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is, nobody else is going to call tonight, huh? What's going on? Wednesday. They're, wait, they're waiting till Thursday. No Phil. What are they? Uh, no Phil Thursday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That could be yeah. Phil. You never know. Yeah. You know. You know. Hey, you know, word word uh, pa travels fast. Are you I, losing uh, your plugs? Are you losing your hair plugs? Uh, losing? No. Uh, it's <laughs> probably the angle. No, uh, it looks and, like. Doesn't it look like he's losing his hair plugs? Uh, well, I'm going for a haircut tomorrow, but uh, I'd be yeah, afraid well, to uh, cut it off. Yeah, I'd, I'd be, be afraid to cut it, it off. Head, <laughs> Don't it grows back. Much. How much did those plugs cost you? Uh, how much? Uh, in nine in two thousand three, it was about thirteen grand. Really? Uh, my mother. That's my mother's haircuts for like ten years, probably. <laughs> Holy. Well, I didn't need haircuts for about ten years prior to getting the plugs. <laughs> so, what I saved, you know, 
Now, did you, you find when you out. got the plugs, you got laid more than before you had the plugs? No, I, you know, I, uh, I looked a lot older than I was when I uh, was uh, when I lost my hair. And uh, so it made me feel uh, I liked it. You know, okay. I, I feel I got my money's worth. Boy. And now I had only hair on the sides and in the back. So uh, like Trump. Yeah, like Trump. But, you know, there, there's uh, there's well, more in the front. Well, my friend, and I my old friend, Robert Schimmel, God bless his soul, who is now dead <laughs> and not from baldness, uh, was quite bald. And I used to wear my hair so that it was coming down here. You know, I had the Danny DeVito look. Right. right? You know, and he said to me, cut it all off. He said, why? He says, I call a preemptive baldness. <laughs> that you don't, if you, if you wear your hair long on the sides because that's the hair you've got, it looks bad. But if you cut it short, your baldness doesn't look as bald. But some yeah. some guys have a uh, the shape of their head uh, is uh, looks good. You look at a Telly Savalas or uh, who's the guy that played King and I, Yul uh, Brenner. Oh, Yul yeah. Brenner. Oh, you I, know, I have you, a fairly good, well shaped head. Yeah. You know. Well, you weren't a breech baby, you know. I I came out uh, feet first, I think. So, uh, well, feet first or head first? He came out, hit the ground running. Yeah, <laughs> Let's feet, go. Yeah, feet first. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, you know, your head gets squeezed a little bit. and uh, They wouldn't have hired me in the FBI. They said no pointy heads. Or, uh, you know, I could have been a cone head uh, on SNL. Really, you, you don't look like you've got a, you know, a pointy no, head. No, it's just a, just a slight uh, uh area on the top and so with the I'd hair say it's the it rest just, of you you have to worry about yeah really uh you know with the hair I, you know, yeah now did i need to do it did it get me laid more no it didn't right. but uh you know it, it made me feel a little bit more confident about myself and that helps that gets you really? laid more. now you take a guy like scott scott uh oh. has a really you have a full head of hair for a guy your age oh. yeah look at him look at that yeah he Look just doesn't have any testosterone. That's what happens when I, that happens. I know. That's absolutely correct. I have extremely. I have the. I have the testosterone level of an eighty-three-year-old man. That was a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, kids that are in their twenties, they have testosterone around what twelve hundred. Uh, By the way, let and, me first of all, before you go any further, explain to the audience: testosterone is not an Italian ice. Okay. <laughs> Uh, or, pastry, or pastry. Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's a thing that makes guys... It's a hormone. Yeah, it's a hormone. And you know how to make a hormone, of course, refuse to pay. Right. Uh, uh, but anyway, I uh, uh, have a very high level of testosterone. But you do. And that's why, you know... You lose guys the hair. Are, so, ladies, if you want a guy... Who really can, Absolutely. you know, really can lay the shit out of you, you know, make you talk to Tony. <laughs> yeah, talk to, talk Tony. to Tony. No, just talk to, <laughs> just talk, find yourself a guy who's, it, who's bald. He's got the testosterone going for him. You know, but uh, when you start getting older and your testosterone level drops, uh, it's harder to lose weight, uh, yeah. and. Um, there are other there are other issues now. I looked into getting uh, testosterone boosters because mine is in the four hundreds, and they said, "Oh, that's fine." I said, "No, no, it's not fine." You know, no, I want no, some no. more. But then they told me one sixty three. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that that's a few low. years ago. They put me on the. I took some like you rub this shit under your armpit. Yeah. It, 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 all it did was want me to make jack off all the time again, so I quit using it. Yeah, well, uh, wait a minute. How and yeah. that was bad. How? <laughs> all the time, Alex. Like three times a day. It was well, horrible. Well, that's what. Welcome to the wonderful world of having testosterone. Well, my nutritionist three times, tired. Th three times yeah. a day. I, I, I come he never on. left the house. I, I was good for at least five or six times a day. Wow. Especially when you were 13, yeah. uh, you know, but, uh, you know, the thing that my nutritionist says about testosterone is that if you take it, uh, you, it's, 
uh, if you have issues with cancer, uh, taking testosterone treatments right. uh, can exacerbate that. So yeah. she told me not to do it. Right. But you don't get cancer simply from having testosterone. No, no. But oh, if but you, you start taking boosters. the testosterone pills. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know. If it's, it's a, why would you have risk? Is it a pill or a shot? Testosterone? Well, the, the testosterone? Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a liquid that you rub oh, yeah. Yeah. under your armpits. Yeah. And okay. absorb. You, you, can't, you can't take a pill because... Do you feel different after you do it? That it? It would kill your liver, basically. Oh. Okay. So, so you have to like put it on your skin and absorb in that way. By the way, you know what's happened to me as I've gotten older? What's that? I've lost all the hair under my armpits. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Maybe because you lose it up here, then you lose it. Jack no, up? no, Not you didn't lose it. it. It's coming from your nose. Oh and yeah, your oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you know we we don't lose it. It's it's like energy, you know. It's, I, I still uh, have I still have some pubic hair left, but the, yeah. the hair under my arms, barely. I, let me feel the. Uh, the uh, there are a couple of some hairs there, a couple of hairs, yeah. you know. But it's just not as hairy as it was. There there are times that I feel wealthier than other times, and I went into a waxing uh, salon, and I had them wax my shoulders and my back. Uh, and uh, you know that was a luxury. Uh, really? I would you know, that's even more of a luxury than getting hair plugs. Did it hurt? Or no, it was like a hot wax. Uh, it's a hot wax. Doesn't really hurt. He lo he likes to pamper himself. I can. But doesn't it hurt? Like they gotta pull it off though? Well, no. Yeah, it's not that bad. A no. bitch. Yeah. I would imagine. A well, I mean, head. what are you? Are you uh, you like uh, look like a gorilla? I mean, what's your problem? No, no, it's it just uh, it was Maybe there. It, it bothered me, you know. So uh, I liked it. I no, I don't have the gorilla hair. That I don't have. But uh, you know, I just liked it smooth. Yeah. You want to be like a baby. Got to get everything smooth. <laughs> Going bald. You know, there there wasn't enough to 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 be anything but a straggly, and uh, so I said, get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Hmm. But. Uh, you know, I see. I see why women do it. I mean, you know, uh, they, you know, I don't do the upper lip or anything, but you know, the shoulders and the back. It seemed like a, a reasonable thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I never thought about doing that. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of Did you yell out the name of movie stars as they were pulling the the hair out of you? Well, no. <laughs> that that happens. Uh, I yell out the name of deities when I'm being Rolfed, which I'm getting tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock. Rolfing's great. Yeah. What's that? It's really great. It is painful, deep massage. massage. Oh. Yeah. What they try to do is uh, get the muscles to move over one another. They, they rip the fascia. Fascia? And uh, yeah. I, I don't know what the fascia does. But it hurts. Well, I'm doing. I, I have I've fasciitis on my foot here, and yeah. as I talk to you on the show, I roll a uh, a golf ball on the bottom of mm -hmm. my foot to kind of break it up and to loosen it up and to make it better. So the next day, when I put shoes on and walk around, it doesn't bother me. Oh, I thought you did that uh, because you wanted to step on your own balls rather than have somebody else do it for you. Uh, yeah. Well, no, okay. no, no. I, oh, people are leaving us like crazy well, now. See, because nobody, because the nobody's the calling. Thing. They're leaving us. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, there must be another podcast on now. That's there uh, must that's be competing. a competing podcast. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're on Spotify yeah. now, along with about eighty thousand other podcasts. So, uh, yeah. go on over and try and find us. Yeah, I noticed the uh, the icon on the uh, website. On um, what website? Cabinet. Oh yeah, I put it up there just to, yeah. you know, in case some people want to go over. Is, is Spotify free? Or do you have to? It's free. Subscribe to it? It's free. Yeah, you, there is a subscription format. Oh okay. But that affects more music than uh -huh. uh, than uh, a podcast. And they've just been recently they've taken podcasts as as a matter of form, which they hadn't done before. So so now there are just there are like tons of them up there, but we're 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 up there. We're uh, you know all our programs are there, folks. Uh, I know that uh, 
I don't know if Damien's put his up yet. I have no idea if he has. Uh, but he chose to put his, his... I said, I'll put it up for you. And he said, no, I'll do it myself. And so I went, okay, and he hasn't. Or I don't think he has. I went looking for it today, and it doesn't come up. So, you know, but uh, Jack's show is up. Uh, Michael Snyder's movie reviews are up. The franchise MC with his sports show is up. Uh, the Ramble, of course, is up. Uh, so all our programs are, are oh, and Life in the Passing Lane is up there, too, as well. So all 67 episodes. So uh, that's, uh, you know. So we have another outlet that we can have nobody listen to us on. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, you're you're on so many outlets. If you add up uh, all of those outlets and all the people that listen on the different outlets, oh you yeah, have yeah, to... there are like uh, tens of people listening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see a few items. I uh, did... oh yeah, this this one came out yesterday. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me let me read it to you. Uh, a defunct retailer has filed a class action suit alleging that Sinclair Broadcast Group, you know, they're the evil broadcast group, yeah, and Tribune like. Media and other big owners of local TV stations conspired, conspired to jack up the prices of local commercials. That, of course, violates federal antitrust laws. Sure. The story continues the suit by now bankrupt Bon Bonton Stores Filed Monday in federal court in the Northern District of Illinois claims the retailer spent more than $89 million in local ads over the past four years. Through their price-fixing scheme, Tribune Sinclair and their John Doe co-conspirators have monopolized the airwaves and extorted millions of dollars from businesses like Bonton, said Bonton outside lawyer Adam Levitt. Uh, but anyway, so that's uh, the latest against uh, Sinclair. Not nice people. Not nice people. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe you can learn something from them and uh, monetize GabNet. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, if we get those uh, other ten listeners, I think we maybe can start running ads. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, you were saying uh, that... Um, uh, I was reading today that Sears is actually filing for yeah, bankruptcy. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, and, and closing. And, cl yeah. and closing the whole the whole schmear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, they had a good run. Yeah, but you know where, where these companies went wrong? They somehow never knew how to embrace the Internet. And yeah. by the time they probably decided to it, it was too late. They had a catalog. They had a, yes, they had a catalog. <laughs> that should have been enough for them years ago to say, let's it sell was. this online. You could not see the Brazier's. Yeah, right. <laughs> but aside from that, if they had monet if they had I if internet the catalog, yeah. They would have been uh, they would have had a they might have had a good business going for them because today you could close down all the stores but you still have the online presence. Now, Sears was a mall anchor and oftentimes what malls would do is that the anchor stores would get either very reduced or no rent and possibly pay a percentage of sales, whereas the other stores that are in the mall were paying very high rents, the small ones, to be next to the anchor stores. So, you know, they couldn't make it even with reduced and low rents. Well, it could uh, be that the anchor store status disappeared for them over the years. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, uh, when was the last time you went to Sears, uh, Scott? Mm -hmm. I had to buy a forklift battery one morning, and I went to Sears because they were open, oh, and okay. and they have the batteries right there. Those. How about you, things. you, uh, uh, Scott? Uh, go to Sears at all recently? Uh, we got our last dishwasher there uh, about four or five years ago. Really? Yeah. Really. So. Ken Moore, I guess whatever it was. So why are they out of business? Well, they they last a long time. I'll I tell you why they're out of business. Mm -hmm. you, if you go there and you try to get help or somebody to, you know, to, to come down off a ladder and answer a question, they're non-existent. Stores have become self-service without the self-service savings. Could, yeah, could well, have. I'll tell you and, something else. I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you, I was today, I, I suddenly realized I was in a mall. Yeah. I didn't think I was in a mall because all I do ever do to go to this place is, is because Costco is there. 
And so I went to the I, I went there and I said I'm 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 in a mall because they, they had all these stores there and so on. And it's basically it's a vertical mall, but it's a mall nonetheless. And um, uh, I suddenly realized that a lot of these malls, their anchor store has got to be Costco. Hmm. You, know. you know, Costco in other areas of the country are usually set away from other stores. They 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 stand alone. Yeah, you're right. IKEA does that. You're right. Uh, you know, and uh, so maybe it's just the real estate in New York uh, forces it to be vertical. And uh, well, the one out in Brooklyn is in its own property. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, and and most of them. Although, uh, if you go to the one in Marin, it's in a in a shopping center, and those are probably going out of business too. I mean, I would I would say that online Amazon companies like that have literally put the mall and the shopping center out of business. Well, I, I when I sent you that uh, Mac Mini, yeah, uh, I threw a book in there called The Big Box Swindle. Yeah, and that that book mentions my store but it it's also talks about uh how these uh these um in things like not necessarily costco but home depot menards and other big boxes how they operate what they do and what it does to the local economy uh in the uh, in the areas that they do open it, it's a very interesting well the book. thing was what's interesting is places like big best buy and so on uh were actually um uh the internet it, saved them. Well, no, but they were uh, considered, you know, uh, what can we call mom, mom, mom and pop store killers. Yeah. You know, because Cate category killers. It, huh? They call it category killers. Yeah. Uh, now, Best Buy has survived so far. And part of the reason, and I'm going to say from personal experience, um, I found that. Uh, I, I and I found this by the personal experience I found it by is I bought a TV set through Amazon. It came, we unboxed it, and the screen was cra it was broken. Right, so immediately I said I want my money back. I sent it back to them, and I went I want that same set. I like that set, but where am I going to get it that cheap? I went online to Best Buy, and they were selling it for I think fifteen twenty dollars cheaper. Right, and they deliver it the next day, they, and somebody would come and set it up, and I said, wow. you know, I think they finally found a reason for existence. I can get something for a. They will meet any price that Amazon has. They will meet that price. I've gone in, and they've said, well, this costs two hundred dollars. And I said, but Amazon's selling it for one fifty, and they said, show us the Amazon. Uh, ad. I took out my iPhone, showed it to them. They said, okay, that's what we'll sell it to you for. I've done the same thing at yeah. Fry's. Yeah. That very thing is what I think has saved Best Buy. There's a reason to shop at Best Buy. Why? They're in the neighborhood. You can go down the street and get it. If you go in and they're charging more than Amazon does, you show them the Amazon price, you're going to get the Amazon price at, uh, at Best Buy. So they have been smart that way. I don't know if it's losing them money, but they've been smart that way. Yeah, I've been buying most of my electronics. I buy it through either Adorama or B and H, and their prices are the same as every you know as Amazon and all those others. I, I had uh, something very strange today at, at Costco that was really off-putting. Yeah. Uh, to begin with, I was videotaping in there, and somebody said, "You can't videotape in here." I'm going, well, "What? Fuck you!" You know, <laughs> what, what do you mean yeah. I can't videotape? I can't videotape. I can't yeah. video in here. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm checking out. I, I went to just go get this five terabyte mini hard drive, you know, the passport size hard drive. Yeah. Why? I don't know why anybody buys. I bought one the other day because it was a six terabyte I needed. But why anybody buys the big hard drives anymore, external hard drives? Because the little ones work just as well. They're just as fast and they take up less room. But I, and, and no power cord. Okay. Right. But. The other thing was, so I, I bought this thing, and I check out, and I put my card in and everything, and she says, I have to call somebody over to okay the sale. What? I said, what for? She says, anything over $100, we have to, any one item over $100, we have to get it okayed. I went, what? 
That oh. never has happened before at Costco. Imagine. Huh? I wonder why they did that. Yeah, I mean, I've oh. gone in and bought things for 150 bucks, you know, a monitor or something, and then nobody comes over and has to sign out on it. That's you buy, you yeah. buy steak, it's over 150 bucks. Exactly. Exactly. Really? <laughs> no, no, I, I, so I don't know why this has suddenly started happening at Costco. Now, now when you got the passport, was it in the box or was it a ticket that no. then you had to oh, go no, to no, a back no, room? No, 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 it was in the box. Okay. In this big, impossible to open box. Oh, we're the ones with the lock and the plastic. In the lock and the plastic and the plastic and the Isn't stuff. Isn't that a shame and, that they always and they you can't get, get the scissors so to go lock through it? Like, you know, anything. Well, I've got a little. I've got a little thing I always use for opening that, and it's this thing. It's just got a razor, it's a little a razor blade in it, yeah. and it, uh, it, it that that'll open it up. But uh, did I read somewhere you could take a can opener? And put it on one of those packages, and you turn the can opener, and it would open. Really? I, I, you know, I think I saw it on a Facebook hack or something. You know, you see those things, you know, twenty-five okay, hacks that you wish you knew. Well, yes. I've got, I've got a, a, that hard drive, that external hard drive that I bought, the big one, in its yeah. packaging back here, and I don't think you could do it with a can opener. Uh, well, it's you know those uh, those packages that are uh, they, they have plastic and they're sealed yeah. and you try to cut them, but even when you cut them, they don't cut. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. I, I use a razor when I come home with this stuff. I kind of like cut it. Like, yeah, you can yeah. use an exact you know, razor. Well, one. Tony, you live in Queens. Everybody uses razors. That's yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> they're ready to kill you. Anything. <laughs> razors and chains. Razors. But anyway, so I you know uh, I, I just, why why is that you know. Uh, Costco slowly turning me off, you know, uh, about the only thing I, I can see to go to Costco for is bacon hot and dog. toilet paper. Oh, I like the hot, hot dog. Yeah, yeah. When we check out, I always get the hot dog. Well, good for you. They are good, right? Oh, they're uh, dog. The it's dog well, meat. Don't you know that? It's dog meat. I actually bought well, no, it. Kosher, it's right? dog it's meat. It's, 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 uh, it's pebbles. Uh, oh, yeah, isn't it all it's still good though? I gotta tell you, I love it. That's so I always get a hot dog on the way. Well, you know, you can buy those. I did. I bought a box. Yeah. Yeah, I bought them there. So I sometimes I barbecue. Yeah, but they're they don't they're 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 skinless, and I hate skinless hot dogs. I like. Are they skinless? I thought they pop when you eat them. I no. no. I always get one or the or the, the Caspers. Have you ever had the Caspers hot dogs? No. Or it's not just a West Coast thing. No, but Nathan's. Nathan's. Well, I like okay. I like you know, but bread. but it's funny. Nathan, are the best hot dogs, folks. In case you don't know, and let me let me elucidate here so that you do know. And that is, the best hot dogs going are ones with skin on them. The ones that when you bite into them, they spurt they and they pop. You know. Now that guy Joey Chestnut. Does the Nathan's hot oh, dogs have the skin? Yes. So this guy puts down 150 hot dogs, and they got the skin on them? Yep. Unbelievable. And the buns. What's his colon got to look like? Yeah, but anyway, uh, <laughs> the the uh, uh, the skin, I always get the skin hot dogs, but they sell Nathan's hot dogs in stores, and yep. the store versions don't have skin on them. What kind of oh, a fucking cool. Nathan's hot dog is that? Uh, you know, every now and then I'll get on the F train and and drive all the uh, take the F train all the way out to Coney Island just to go to the original Nathan's. Well, these other guys have no skin in the game. You're right. You're, <laughs> all right. Thank you, Phil. Good one. Good one. I have to, give, I have to give you that. You know. All right. Uh, that goes oh, down. That, that, that goes so down with who, who? He lives in San Jose. What? Really? Joey, Joey Chestnut, Chestnut, the guy that eats the the uh, hundred. He's ranked number one by Major League Eating. It says on Wikipedia. <laughs> he eats the, uh, the uh, Nathan's hot dogs on July 4th. You know something? I just don't know that that's anything you want to be proud of. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I mean, I just wonder why these people go out there and have the... And there, there is money, I think, they win. Don't they win some money for I, I have no idea. I mean, I'm sure Nathan's pays them, right? Speaking of winning money, dogs, by the I way, you know, the... Uh, the uh, what is it? The uh, big uh, The big lottery, what's it called? Uh, mega, mega, the, mega bucks or whatever yeah. it's called. Uh, yeah, this week is going to be over a half a billion dollars. Yeah. 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 I'll win. 
<laughs> no, I we'll all we'll all buy a ticket, and then uh, it'll be won by some, you know, uh, illegal, uh, illegal immigrant. Illegal, illegal immigrant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for him. Yeah. yeah, they won't give him the money though. Mm-hmm. But that's good because the next week it'll go up to six hundred million. Don't no, they do. Up. I think they give him the money. They have I don't, to. I think they if they're uh... if you buy a, a lottery ticket, let's say you're from outside the country, you're here on vacation, you buy a lottery ticket, you win, you're going to get the money. You're going to get the money. Is there something about <laughs> buying a lottery ticket out of state and they send it to you in the mail that's illegal? I think that's illegal not, too. Not that I know of. I mean, if I if you buy a lottery ticket, you buy a lottery <laughs> ticket. Like the Mega Millions. <laughs> the Mega <laughs> Millions is all over the United States. You know, it's not just uh, here. Most of it. So I oh. will go down today, to ne- this week, and maybe buy $20 worth of lottery tickets with the chance of winning that kind of money. But my chances of winning that lottery are better than anybody listening to GabNet on Spotify. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I know what it's like to take chances. Well, you know, I had never played the lottery up until uh, I joined that camera club. And I and the, the coffee they have at the camera club is terrible. It's instant coffee. <laughs> so I stopped. What at is this, it? An a- uh, it sounds like an AA meeting to me. Yeah, really. <laughs> and so I stop at this uh, 7-Eleven type place. Yeah. And I get a, a Starbucks coffee. They got this machine. Yeah. You press the button and you get the Starbucks coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the Starbucks coffee is not enough money for me to use my uh, uh, debit card. So they, they want you to spend more than four dollars or three dollars or something to get the debit to use the debit card. Yeah. You know, I like keeping track of what I spend, and the way I do it is I spend it on the debit card. So I get a lottery ticket now. Uh, it's two bucks, and uh, I say, okay, give me give me a lottery ticket and my coffee. And uh, I, I put it on the debit card, and I go. You know what? I never have won any money on what? scratchers. Oh, I, I do the scratchers. I like them. I get a whole uh, mother of me. Yeah, oh, you know, yeah. How, you, how much money cheese. have you won over the years on scratchers? You ever get a big payout? I think no. twenty dollars once. Oh wow! My, Don't my spend bro- it all. My brother's so excited when I win. Yeah, like, 20, 20, 20, what? What? Wait a minute. What? <laughs> what? What? Yeah. what Scott? My uh, my brother, my little brother. Yeah. He won a hundred thousand dollars on a scratch off thing. Really? 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 Yeah. Son of a bitch. Now Tony, Tony would play the numbers for his mother. Yeah, he gives six hundred. And and so uh, he says, you know, uh, you got a number. He says, I'll put a dollar oh, yeah, on it. Playing numbers for him. Right. So I would play he the numbers on that. Tony's money. <laughs> but uh, right. usually I play six one three for her own license plate, straight in fifty fifty box. She hits a few times. It doesn't matter. I let them just pick the numbers for me. It doesn't oh, no, really I matter. Alex, she's crazy. She has dreams in numbers sometimes. I have, lo- I have my lucky it's a numbers. She's stealing number. I said, she's not going to win anyway. The numbers, <laughs> some Italian guy with a with a paper bag. He's got the numbers. He goes to a barber shop. He picks them up. He drops isn't them off this, somewhere else. Isn't this the same as the numbers That's game true. used to be, basically? Yeah, yeah. it's illegal. It's a uh, no, 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 it, no, no. It's the mafia. No, but not the, they used uh, to no, do the numbers. But isn't this the legal version? Pretty much the same as playing the numbers. Yeah, except it's government sponsored. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so back in the day, you were able to play the numbers like at the candy store, and you just give them the money. Yeah, that's what you did. There was some. But who drew the balls though? They just told you. No, what they was. didn't. They uh, they would go to a racetrack. They would look at the <sighs> last three numbers of the attendance. Oh, and uh, that was how they determined what the number was going to well, be. Well, that's pretty ingenious. So you can uh, just look well, at I think there were other ways they did that too. I think there were other. Uh, uh, Ways in which the numbers came up. Yeah, I think they use in New York. They used to use like Yonkers uh, uh, racetrack. It was a uh, uh, for horses. Yeah, and 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 the attendance would get published. I think the next day or something, and that was that, that was the how they did the numbers. Yeah, and then you would find the guy who sold you your numbers ticket, and he would pay you. No, you go back to the barber shop. Or no, to you the go candy back to the, you go back to the bookie is really who you go back yeah, to basically. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, he he would deal with the bookie. Oh, oh really? The barber would deal with the bookie. Now, you know more about this than I do. I think well, he liked to play the numbers and bet the way. No, no, my my uh, my father, uh, well, my grandfather was a bookie, and but he died in the 1930s. And my father told me 
that um, uh, he had told him that uh, gambling was for suckers and never to gamble. You know, and, and being a bookie, you weren't gambling. You always had the the edge. And um, oh, so I'm then sure, uh, I'm sure I'm sure uh, you know if it's three numbers or four numbers or whatever. I mean, it's yeah. the same as playing the lottery. Yeah, I'm basically. sure. I'm sure. A lot of times, they probably didn't have any winners. In yeah, the they don't. Game. Yeah, they just get all day loving when there's no winners. Let's keep the money. And if there is a winner, so what? You know, good, good for you, pal. Yeah. Now, when Tony would play the numbers for his mother, yeah. did you always give the money and get the number from the from the bookie, or did you no, sometimes pocket the, the money? No, he and, pays. And, he's, and, he's, he's playing. Tell her that she lost. He's playing the legal lottery. Because <laughs> Cuomo won't legalize gambling. I mean, what, Alex? Cuomo legalize it already. Alex was saying something you talked about. No, but I mean, Tony's mother never went to a bookie to play the no. numbers. No, no, she sent Tony. She sent me, and then I get my legs broken. No, she goes, he goes I down, he gets the lottery say, tickets. Billy, give me you three numbers. Which no, 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 wait, he, he wait, would no. go and he played the numbers. Hold on for a second. His which lottery do you play for your mother? Do you play the New York oh, lottery? I usually play the pick three at night. Oh, okay, so, but you played you played the New York well, lottery. Vega, I think, used to pull the numbers. She used to watch it right before Wheel of Fortune. They would cut in. Yeah. And then it'd be like tonight's winning pick three, and they go like five. So she always would watch Wheel of Fortune, and then when the oh, so when you went to the candy channel, don't turn it. Like I'm gonna turn the channel, mom. I'm only getting coffee. So and when you went to the candy store, I, I, I told her I played it. No, but, no, no I mean, so when you went to the candy store, yeah. you you were playing the real numbers. You weren't yeah, playing, the, playing the mafia the numbers. Lottery, lottery. But I have to say night, not day, because they pull them in the afternoon. One time I put it in for the night before for the next day, and I said afternoon pick three. She got mad because she always wants to play at night only. They pull them at like seven fifteen. Has she night. ever won a decent amount of money out of it? She won about three hundred bucks, I think, once. Well, two eighty, whatever the Once. payout. Is. And now, so how much money spent. in the meantime has she spent? Oh, that was long gone as soon as it came home. <laughs> the bills, the this, the, yeah. Now, Tony, no, 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 no. I'm saying, saying how much has she lost over the oh, years? Yeah, Alex, forget. At, I never took her money. I used to always lay it out. Oh, now, really? I don't my wallet. I said, it's all right, Ma. I used to just come out. I feel better when I took her What do you I'm mean? Gonna... Putting boxes together all day has made you a big spender? No, but she makes me dinner, so I can I take two dollars from my mother? I feel bad. So, you know, I says, I got it. I usually just Well, like, she don't take it out of her purse. purse. She'd give me money, like 20 bucks. Yeah. I mean, I can't take $2 from her. I wouldn't do it. I feel like a bitch, really. I mean, she makes me dinner. I mean, it does my clothes. I mean, Have I you ever money. lived somewhere else other than that house? No, actually, this is it. Really? Yeah, it's kind of strange, really. Yes, I'm it so is, just, Tony. Yes, it like is. It's like a relic, you know. I said to myself, I yeah. think the house is taking you know, me over. You uh, know, uh, I and uh, Scott and uh, Phil, we moved out when we hit 18, right? Yeah. I stayed. She wishes I would have left. She likes me home now because they call me all the time. Well, do, do you even have to pay any rent at all? Or no, I pay rent for my mom. Oh, yeah. oh okay. He pays rent. You do pay rent. She doesn't pay any bills. 30 How much? Yeah. What do you pay? What do you pay? I pay a thousand, but me. I, you I pay a thousand like, a month to your mother. There's good money in boxes. Jeez. <laughs> but I also we pay the cable. She doesn't pay none of the cable or anything like that because she just you know we kind of do the billing now for her because she can't do it. She can't see. She's legally blind. I took her to the eye doctor to get a shot. I says, Doc, can she see out of this other eye at all? Right? So you he keep says, telling her, Tony? She see, like, fuzziness. This is Tony. She, she's Tony. Bloods. I said, how the fuck are you watching Tom Selleck? I said, Tony, I, I, are, are, you tell, are you showing her the books that she can't see and telling her you put $1,000 in there? But he said it's like a, it's like a blur. <laughs> I, I, what I'm smelling here, folks, what I'm smelling here is Norman Bates. Okay? <laughs> I think sometimes I thought about what you said. I said, you know, he's not that far off. <laughs> I mean, I love her, Alex. Believe me. Love my mother. But after a while, it's like, come oh, on, you're killing me. I'm trying. I'm trying to finish reading the book. The book, the she calls me. Out. I got her the Alexa, right? Because she can't say, so I figured she could do the voice call. It was the worst nightmare. Now, now I see mom bringing my cell phone. Oh God, what do you want? Put my air conditioner on. It's fucking sixty-five degrees out. Open the window. So I got to go up the stairs, put the air conditioner on, sit down. Let's talk. How was your day? My. How was my day? The warehouse stinks. I'm going up and down the stairs a hundred times. I want to go back downstairs. All right. Oh wait, I'm going to call the farmers. Okay, you want to stay 
Tony, <laughs> if you go up and down the stairs a hundred times a day, you're going to fall down. How can you? How can you text me thirty oh, you know, times I, a day? Because and I'm Ray Renati, you yeah. do it. You do it to him too. I thirty forty yeah. times you know, a day. I, how do you do this? My workstation huh. with my coffee. I mean, you never that, work. It. Alexa is not. She means well, but you're right, Alex. After a while, it's like, ma, I'm enough already. I'm going downstairs. Call me later. But not in an hour, though, please. <laughs> Yeah, she's, oh, she's, she's all right. I mean, we're finding out, folks. We're finding out more about Tony did than you really we really on, ever though? wanted to know. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, like she said, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. I, said, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm joking because <laughs> she knows I'm always joking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she's Are you like, in the will? The last <laughs> one's gonna spoil. Are you in the will? I don't want to hear this anymore. Are you in the will? <laughs> I was the last one. Wait a minute, you're not listening to me. Oh, what's that? Oh, you see, I mean, you, you start talking, then you just don't... I know, because my mother's taking over again. She's getting me crazy. So, I mean, are you in the will? Oh, actually, yes. We are. Me and my brother have... Uh, everything's in trust to me and my brother. The, the house and my my grandmother's house, which was oh, sold Oh, so you'll recently. never have to leave that house. Actually, no, but I think we're probably going to want to... I would probably like to leave to get a one family, to have a little more space. When the time, you know, if they weren't here, go off a bit. Because I told my mom, she said, you should probably get something just smaller. Because I don't want to live with a stranger. How old is she? Huh? How old is she? 77, 76. What? She's younger than me? I think she might be, Alex. No, she might be. She might be. If she's 77, but it sounds to me like she's on, she's, uh, there's a bucket and she's getting ready to kick it. You know, it is, uh, she's very what neat, Tony she, did can't, she can't walk well, and she's legally blind, so she's falling apart. I mean, I love her still. Though. What Don't kind of rough wrong. life did she lead, and what kind of charm life did I lead, you know? All, well, I, I, all I've got blind, is numb if feet. she's blind and she can't walk, uh, she should be calling the show. Oh, God, if she called the show, <laughs> she'd be talking about Tom Selleck. Oh, she loves the guy. Tom Selleck? Yeah. Yeah, everything is Tom Selleck for once. I swear to God. Oh boy. Oh, my show's on Friday. It's a new one. I says I don't care about Donnie Wahlberg and Selleck is not my. Well, this is the most I animated. Gonna... We've... This show stinks. I said, Ma. Oh, I like. This it. is what happens when you don't call, folks. Tony actually talks. Yeah, I told this to Shecky. He laughs. He says it's funny. I said I know. I got a she note. From, I, by the way, I got a note from Shecky. I got a note from Shecky because he's in. Uh, he's oh, in Port. How's the show? He, he, what? He's at the film con. I forgot. Is it Portononi in Italy? Yeah. To the film con. That sounds nice. Isn't? It's a silent film thing. It's days and days of silent films. Uh, but uh, uh, we have been talking over the years. Cause I love three D. Okay. Yeah, me too. I like the 3D. And, and I love, so I have a two 3D TV sets here, but they stopped making the 3D TV sets. And you think, well, why'd they stop making them? Why? Because they weren't a sales factor? How much could it cost to put 3D in a TV set? Well, he got the answer. How much? A friend of his found out about it, and they got into a discussion about it, and he said, my friend Alex and I always are arguing about you know why there are no more 3d tv sets and i'm saying because they don't see a worth for it. he says do you know how much it costs for them to put the chip in the set that makes a, a, a tv set 3d and he Ten said down. no 75 cents Jeez. oh my god all they need to do is just put the chip in there and say hey if you got some 3d movies you can watch it with this no big deal D don't charge more money because it's a 3d tv set what they did is when the 3d tv sets came out they just jacked the prices up right you want 3d here it is you know 75 cent chip and they found out nobody watches 3d I used so to love it's wasting the 75 what cents. do you mean you're not wasting it with me man i love 3d I remember going to see the Vincent Price movie. And, right? and by the way, you know, when movies are shown in theaters, people pretty much go to the 3D version, not yeah, the 2D I mean, version. I usually I mean, go to the 3D. I don't, want to, I don't want to watch in 3D. I don't want to wear those glasses, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't go to the 3D version. But are you version. wearing glasses anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I don't want to put those them. glasses on top of my glasses. Uh, oh, okay, but uh, well, I don't mind the glasses. And in yeah. fact, what we do is a, a by... 
you steal a, the glasses. Ritual. We don't steal like, them. We I paid the for them, for Christ's them. sake. They charge us three, four dollars okay. more <laughs> ticket, right? Yeah, Those but 3D, it says put the glasses in the barrel. They would like you to do that, so they can then take them and rinse them off and put them on somebody else's yeah, eyes. They don't rinse them off. <laughs> you know, uh, no, they take you them. Get, you get the ball sweat from the next guy. No, the com- uh, the yeah. company takes them back. They send them back to the company. The company cleans them, refurbishes them, repackages them, and sends them back out to the movie theaters. Why should I? I should keep those so i have hundreds now, of 3d glasses are you complaining in this about the the price of a ticket to, to the movies oh yeah now you you are single-handedly costing the movie industry hundreds of thousands of dollars by stealing these glasses and now they have to raise the price of the ticket and the rest of the world suffers for your addiction you know oh really yeah oh huh. how are they yeah. suffering again uh, you're stealing the glasses. They got to raise the price of the movie. No, they don't. No, they don't. Of course they do. You know. In yeah. fact, sometimes you know where it says deposit your 3D glasses here. I actually dip yeah. in there and grab a couple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's my feeling that I paid for them. You know. Oh, yeah. You know. When I pay for the price of admission to a theater, these theaters they have 16 screens, 24 screens. Yeah. I go from 10 in the morning. To almost midnight, yeah, uh, and, and and I'll go from movie to movie, and I got it figured out. I have an app on my phone, so I can see when the next movie starts. So I don't have to stare and look at it. I can just look at the app and say, "Oh, I got to go to this theater uh, because this one's starting at the right time." You know? Oh, okay, all right. But yeah. uh, theater hopping. You know, oh, you do that. I don't do that. That right. I don't do. Uh, I just steal the glasses. Yeah, but they you know what they do? They stagger the movies enough that you can't just walk in at the beginning of some other film. Well, you can. Sometimes you can sample something, see if you want to go back to it. You know, you get five, ten minutes yeah, but, and just but, check it out. But they stagger them enough so that you'd have to miss a half hour of the show. You know, there was a time, folks, uh, kids, you listening? You listening to me, kids? What are you going to the Bijou? No. If you got 24 screens, they can't stagger. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kids, years ago, you go to a movie. I bet even Scott remembers this. Tony probably doesn't. Phil does. Uh, two, two movies and a, and a cartoon. Right, but well, different from that. When did you go to the movie? Saturday. You come in in the middle of a picture. Really? Yes. You didn't say, what time does it start? You would come in in the middle of a movie. You would sit through the two features, and then you would look at your friend and say the most common statement in those days, is this where we came in? Yeah. Right? Do you remember those, Scott? No. No. Okay. Too late for you. I watch a lot of movies like that. No, in the old days, and you could sit there if you really liked the movies. You could sit there all day and watch the movies over and over again. Nobody's kicking you out. Yeah. Well, now they don't like that. But, oh no! Uh, now they they you know they clean they clean the theater out and they say you got to leave. I'm sorry, it's over with. You got to get there when it starts. You know. Yeah. So uh, and and if you get there late, yeah, fuck you. You know. Except yeah. that the it's uh, except that the comfy chair theater, where you own that seat, nobody else can well, take that seat. When I buy my ticket, I will buy it for the for the uh, movie that I think they're going to check tickets. You know, like yeah. they have certain ones that are really in demand and the, and they're limited seats. So that's the one I'll buy the ticket for, mm-hmm. and then I just hop. Uh, you know, and even if I don't like that movie, I'll go to see something else. Mm-hmm. But I'll I'll make sure I have the one that's tough to get in. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, but uh, you know, the whole the whole nature of the way movies are uh, are screened has changed, and there's also no pride in uh, in showmanship either. You know, I I, I on two occasions um, had problems with the projections of a film. One was that it wasn't in 3D when it was supposed to be in 3D, and everybody is sitting there. And I notice it's not in 3D because I'm the big 3D maven, and I go downstairs and I tell them, and they go, no, it's in 3D. That's a 3D showing. I said, come upstairs. Here, put these glasses on. That's not 3D. You're right. I said, I know I'm right. I said, he said, we can't do anything about it. The film's already started. You know, it's Enjoy like a hard, show. It's a hard <laughs> drive. 
And I said, I want my money back. I paid, you know, I paid extra for 3D. I'm not getting 3D. They thought I was crazy. I, and I'm looking at the theater, and everybody's there with their fucking glasses on thinking they're watching a 3D movie. And nobody's complaining but me. And it's not because I'm an old man. It's because I paid for 3D. You know, yeah. and the other time, it was Black Panther. I told people it wasn't until I saw it on video that I actually saw the film because it was so dark. The film was being projected so dark, and the guy went, no, it looks okay to me. I said, come over. You're playing it in the theater next to this one, okay? Come on over to the other theater. And I put the glasses on him there, and I said, take a look at that. He says, you're right. It's very dark in the other theater. But there's nothing we can do about it because it's halfway into the film. I don't went, Jesus Christ. Did you move over to the other theater? No, because the other theater was uh, was running, I think, later. Oh. The film later than was running, you know, so I would miss something. But, and I couldn't. It was a comfy chair theater, and it was sold out, and everybody had a seat there already. So I couldn't. I, that's why I couldn't go there. But, you know, uh, it's it's the lack of pride in showmanship that gets to me. I like the trivia questions that they got before the uh, before the thing. You'd but, probably be good they, at that. They don't do that anymore. What? No, they got it at my theater, AMC. They got trivia questions. Oh, really? You know, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I usually get them. No, right. with me, at my, at my theaters, they seem to run these 15-minute uh, commercials uh, for movies that, you know, for... And now, uh, you know, let's take a look at this new TV series, Behind the Scenes. Coming out in April. Yeah, yeah, and you and you get like uh, you know twenty minutes of uh, or fifteen or twenty minutes of what is essentially a commercial, you know, and then you get the trailers which go for now twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Twenty minutes, and yeah. and and all of them, unfortunately, all of them are are tagged for the feature that is playing. So, like, if it's a Marvel movie. It's like all the action adventure pictures that are coming out in the next, you know, six months. And if it's a romantic film, well, then it's all the weepy pictures that are coming out in the next six months. Yeah. yeah. I, I also have my favorite seat uh, in theaters. Uh, and I like to get there early enough to get it. It's just above the handicap section. There's a rail where you can, nobody's in front of you. Oh, right. You're a little bit higher. Right. And you put your feet on the rail. Right. Right. Yeah. That's that's. But today, most of the theaters now are going to this comfy chair yeah. format, and you have to like uh, pick, purchase what seat you want. You know. Do you have that, Scott, in Plano or in that area? Yes, we do. The we comf- do have that. Because when I was talking about the comfy chair originally, you probably never had that one, and it, right? now now all right. a lot of the major theaters now have it. Uh. So you know. That's fine with me. I like the comfy chair theaters. I like to lay back. It's fun. Well, I don't lay yeah. back. I just like the comfy chair. Oh, I like I, oh I, you don't put your feet up? Yeah, my feet, they get numb. Oh. Ah. Because of my it spine. It doesn't come with a chiropractor. Hey, uh, I just saw on my iPhone there's, there's a uh, software update, 12.0.1. Really? Oh, well, that means I'll have to do my watch, too, probably. By yeah, the way, what time is it, Mickey? It's 11.57. Oh, well, you know. It's almost time for us to, to call it quits here. What time is yeah. it, Mickey? It's 11.57. Well, it's 11.57. But I'll bet if I ask you again, Mickey, you'll tell me differently. It's 11.58. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. He laughed, too. Yeah. So, uh, he, uh, did Mickey say it's time for the uh, for the outtake song? The, 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 the theme the song. song. Yeah. Is it time for the theme song, Mickey? It's 11.58. Oh, shut up, you fucking mouse. Anyway. Come in, Mickey. Huh? Hey. I got a Mickey Mouse. They yeah. went to Disney World. I got a Mickey got a watch. Oh, you got the watch. That trumps me. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. I Pretty like cool. the watch. Anyway, yeah. listen, I got to go. Uh, uh, Phil, it's been nice talking to you. It's been nice talking to you, Tony, hearing all about your life as uh, Sorry about as that. Norman Bates. And uh, uh, Scott, very nice talking to you. Uh, and uh, all the other people who didn't call, fuck you. You know, uh, we had a nice time tonight. Good, Good panel. Didn't talk once about the T word. It's a Trump free zone. <laughs> and it will be again tomorrow night, too. <laughs> well, not tomorrow night, we can talk about Trump and just sm- 
bash him. And just smack him, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 give him a pimp hey, there's slap. there's nobody to stand up to you. Hey, give yourself a big uh, wave goodbye so everybody can see you waving goodbye. That's it. That's our citizen panel for tonight, uh, albeit uh, kind of, uh, what can we call it? Uh, oh, gee, we lost everybody, and they all hung up at the same time. Well, to hell with them, man. I don't, we don't need them. Uh, anyway, we don't need no stinking rotten panel any longer. Anyway, I really uh, thank them for having joined us tonight, uh, and uh, hopefully they will, oh, well, uh, tomorrow night will be a, a free night, uh, a fill free night. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, as the case may be. In any any event, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, one, next is Jack Bishop and the intersection, followed by Connections at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow night. Damian Chaplin and The Exchange is here at 9.30 and then at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. It's me. And if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>